Hi, my name is Patrick. I'm a second year computer science PhD student at the CUNY Graduate Center. And for this video, I will be reviewing the recent paper that introduced FAST SCNN. The reason I selected this paper is that semantic segmentation is an aspect of my research and image understanding. And I'm also interested in the paper's above real-time semantic segmentation approach. So some of the challenges involved in real-time semantic segmentation is addressed in the paper. Specifically, the fact that semantic segmentation in real time is computationally expensive. Also, it is difficult to effectively perform real-time semantic segmentation on embedded devices. There are methods to overcome the computational costs of deeper networks, such as using smaller inputs or employing high-end GPUs. However, it is difficult to perform this task efficiently on embedded devices mainly due to the lack of full resolution input in some devices and the devices having lower memory. This problem is important for several applications including autonomous systems and robotics where the input is required to be processed quickly to enable responsive interactivity with the environment. Moreover, semantic labeling is typically applied as a pre-processing step for other time critical tasks there is also the idea that real-time semantic segmentation on embedded devices may facilitate applications such as augmented reality for wearables. The paper's approach is impactful in the way that it is capable of processing images with high resolution while efficiently running on embedded devices. In addition, it demonstrates that a low-capacity network does not necessitate large-scale pre-training for effective performance. So I will now provide a brief history of frameworks for real-time semantic segmentation, beginning with the conventional DCNN, which combines an encoder for extracting features with a decoder that retains spatial details from the features and predicts the object labels. The fully convolutional network introduced by Long et al. in 2015 established most of the modern segmentation architectures. The encoder uses VGG, while the decoder combines bilinear upsampling with skip connection from lower layers. Some of the earliest efficient segmentation models included SegNet in 2017, which built off of FCN. It presented a joint encoder-decoder model. The more recent segmentation approaches incorporate two-branch and multi-branch systems. In a two-branch system, the global context is captured with a deeper branch at low resolution, while the boundaries are learned in a shallow branch at full input resolution. These are common techniques of efficient DCNNs, which can be partitioned into four categories. One of the more popular techniques is using DEFY separable convolutions, which decomposes a standard convolution into a DEFWISE convolution and a one by one pointwise convolution this reduces floating point operations and convolutional parameters. So the author's proposed model is inspired by two frameworks, two branch architectures and encoder decoder networks with skip connections. In addition, they adopt DEFWISE separable convolutions and inverse residual blocks. The paper's proposed approach is new in how it combines the two branch architecture with the encoder decoder framework. This fast SCNN model reinterprets skip connections using a technique called learning to downsample. The fast SCNN model improves upon state-of-the-art real-time semantic segmentation systems when applied on the cityscape's dataset. It is also efficient at processing subsample data without needing to modify the model. Some of the technical accomplishments of the paper include the learning to downsample module, which simultaneously encodes spatial detail from two different resolution branches. This computation is fast and efficient since the feature extraction is shared at different levels of resolution. Another technical accomplishment is the low capacity of the fast SCNN model, which allows for better generalization and execution on embedded devices with lower memory. So these are the results of the paper's experiments. 
FAST SCNN was evaluated on the validation and test sets of the Cityscapes dataset. FAST SCNN was also compared to other state of the art real time semantic segmentation approaches via the class and category mean of intersection over union. It does, however, perform slightly lower than BISENET and GUN. Shown here is a comparison of runtimes at different resolutions. Two versions of fast SCNN are provided, softmax output labeled PROB and object label output labeled CLS. As the table suggests, fast SCNN is considerably faster when processing higher resolution images. Qualitative results of the fast SCNN are provided as well. The first column shows input RGB images. The second column illustrates the ground truth labels. The segmentation results of FAST SCNN are shown in the third column. These qualitative results demonstrate the benefits of incorporating skip connections in the FAST SCNN model. The first column are RGB images. The second column displays FAST SCNN outputs, while the third column shows FAST SCNN results without the skip connection. Boundaries in smaller objects are captured better in the second column. This presents fast SCNN performance with and without pre-training and weekly label data. The idea suggested here is that neither ImageNet pre-training nor weekly label data are significantly beneficial for the fast SCNN model. The training progress of the fast SCNN variants is depicted in these graphs. The authors indicate that the original FAST SCNN only needs to be trained longer to achieve similar accuracy as seen in the bottom graph. Runtime and accuracy at different input resolutions is provided. At quarter resolution, FAST SCNN achieves competitive accuracy while being efficient. This verifies that it is highly suitable for embedded devices. So now I will give an explanation of the FAST SCNN architecture. FAST SCNN is comprised of four primary components. Beginning with the learning to downsample module, which ensures low level feature sharing is valid and efficiently implemented. The module is made up of a standard convolutional layer followed by two DEFY separable convolutional layers. The output of the learning to downsample module is given to the coarse global feature extractor at 1 8 resolution of the original input. Its main task is to capture the global context in images using a bottleneck residual block and a pyramid pooling module. The feature fusion module performs simple addition of the features to ensure efficiency. It uses non-linearity only if the convolutions are not pointwise. The final component is a standard classifier, which is built using two DEFY separable convolutions and one pointwise convolution. For the most part, softmax is applied for training. I will now give a brief comparison of the FAST SCNN architecture and the two frameworks that inspired it. First, the two branch framework. Here, the learning to downsample module is equivalent to the spatial path of the two branch framework while the global feature extractor module is equivalent to the deeper low resolution branch. In general, FAST SCNN is a special type of an encoder decoder framework. The key difference is that it applies only a single skip connection to reduce computations in memory, while a classical encoder decoder framework employs multiple skip connections at many resolutions. So I implemented the FAST SCNN model in Python using TensorFlow. I used the ADE 20K dataset along with some sample code to perform real-time semantic segmentation. I used the ADE 20K dataset because it contains RGB images fully annotated with diverse scenes, objects, and parts of objects. It has also been used before as a benchmark for several baseline semantic segmentation models. Here are the training parameters that were applied. The training set consisted of 20,210 images with the validation set reserved for testing since the ADE 20K dataset does not have a test set. 
there were several training issues that were encountered, including not being able to train the implemented fast SCNN model past 10 epochs, and the program taking hours to train. Accuracy would not improve past 10%, and there were clear signs that the implemented model was severely underfitting. As a result, there were a few strategies applied to attempt to improve the fast SCNN training, such as using less images and less classes, but neither improved training. Since the model could not be trained properly, it was not tested on the validation set. Perhaps on a more powerful computer than the one used in this implementation, fast SCNN would have performed significantly better. So here is the reference to the paper. So thanks for watching this review of the fast SCNN paper.